All right, we're going to be testing out basically a vertical array. Everybody just want to know how the serious 415 watt solar panels are going to do as a vertical setup. Like you want to make a fence out of it. And that's what we're going to be testing out in this video. If my rooster will be quiet. And yes, Signature Solar did send me these panels to do testing on. So just so we can get that out of the way before we do the testing. So as you can see, I've got a little temporary setup. I got some clamps on here with some two by sixes on both sides, you know, holding these up. There goes the rooster again. Maybe we just have to kill it. This isn't a permanent setup. So, you know, your vertical setup might not be exactly the same as mine. And if you put your panels a little bit off the ground, you know, of course I'm gonna have a little grass and stuff blocking the bottom and stuff like that. So it's not gonna be perfect, but this is just real world testing. And basically I did a couple of days with them laying on the ground. And then yesterday I had them sitting up just like this and today, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up the results for you. And bottom line is when they're laying flat on the ground, of course, it's going to pull in more power that way because it's not going to be as efficient with it standing straight up, you know, when the sun's directly over it and in the morning and in the evening when it is getting sun, it's just not going to be able to pull in as much power because it just have, doesn't have that direct sunlight, you know, it's just when it's first coming up and first going down. But I'm going to go ahead and pull up the results right here from the first day when I had them laying flat. Basically, I was, had the panels laying flat on the ground. As you can see, you know, nothing special and just five panels. And this is what I pulled in for that day. And the first day, you know, it was pretty clear that day. So let's go ahead and pull up what we got. Bam. Click on shed. Go over to data. And it's going to show you basically what I pulled in for solar. The first day was 11.3 kilowatts. As you can see right there, you know, pretty sunny day, pretty good day. So let's go ahead and calculate by the two panels. So we pull in 11,300 divided by five. So we basically pull in 2,260 watts per panel. And let's divide that by the 415 that they're rated for. And basically that's 5.44 hours of uh, full power that they pulled in. So it's definitely above average, which is about five hours, as most people know. So let's go ahead and look at the second day where we had a little bit of clouds and, you know, we pulled in 10.5 kilowatts, you know, it was just a partially cloudy day. So it wasn't exactly the same as the day before. And that was still with the panels being flat on the ground. And then that night I switched them over and put them just like this, making them straight up and down vertical, making them basically like a fence. And it's not completely west east, but it basically is. So you know, it might not be perfect in that sense, but as you can see, uh, yesterday what we pulled in and the weather, you know, wasn't completely the same. It may have been a little more cloudy this day with them straight up and down, but we only pulled in 6.3 kilowatt hours. But even when the sun was out, you know, we never got up to the same rate at one time that we pulled in from the day before. So, I mean, I may be able to pull it up and go ahead and show you a few of those, but you know, maybe in pulling in 16, 1700 watts or 2000 watts or something like that at one time with them laying flat on the ground. I can't remember exactly what it was, but with them vertical like this, the most I've seen come in was maybe 800 or 700 watts at one time. So definitely you're never going to be able to pull in the same power vertically as laying on the ground. All right. And one thing y'all, y'all may be interested in is what it, what is it bringing in right now in the middle of the day at 1:32? Let's go right on to it. And at 132, as you can see, I, I burned down my battery charging my car by accident. So the battery's only 1% on this setup. And this is on the 12 kPV and the indoor power wall battery, which I'm be doing testing a whole bunch of testing on that stuff as well. But I know I haven't did a video on it yet, but I'm just doing testing right now. But basically got 416 watts coming in right now. And you know, their sun seems to be out right this second. Of course, there's cloud cover that he's going by. So what we're going to do is just lay them straight down and see how much more power we're going to pull in when I'm laying straight on the ground, basically in the middle of the day. All right, just got them laid down. And of course, it's the clouds that came out. Just got these things laid back down on the ground. And of course, clouds rolled overhead. So right now pulling in 265 watts. And the sun seems like it may be coming back out a little bit right now. So we'll see if this code go ahead and comes back up. Let's go ahead and refresh it. See how long it takes to update with this EG4 app on the 12K. So right now we're pulling, as you can see, 1,753 watts when the sun came out. So, you know, 
versus the thing standing straight up and down, what we're pulling in, I have to go back and look, you know, not even half of that, you know, so we're probably pulling in three times as much when it laying on the ground in the middle of the day. So of course, if you have the battery storage and the usage for the power, you're going to be able to pull in more power with them laying flat on the ground or facing south. So these aren't even really facing south towards the sun. It's just laying down basically flat on the ground. So it just shows you how much better it is than vertical, you know, for the middle of the day. In the morning and in the evening, of course, you can pull a little more power than you can with them laying straight on the ground here. But throughout the day, you know, you're going to pull it in less kilowatt hours because, you know, 10 to 2, or 10 to 3, when it would be your best time of the day, you're barely going to pull in any power because the sun's going to be right overhead of your vertical panels, you know, so it's not going to be hitting the cells directly. So, of course, what do I think? I think you have your panels facing south, your main part, until the point where you can get your batteries fully charged every day, you know, with using everything that you normally use. If you're always charged, you know, before the day is over, then at that point, your next array after that, you can start adding in. Maybe it should be a west-facing array, or maybe you should add in more batteries. It just depends on the amount of money you want to spend and the setup you want to have. I think there's instances for different people to do different things, either buy more batteries or have a west-facing array. If you have enough batteries to run you, you know, for 10 or 12 hours, but not for 15 or 16 hours, then maybe if you get a west-facing array, you get a little more power in the evening when you're using a lot of power and you're not draining your battery. Or you can do both. You can add a west-facing array and a couple more batteries. That way you can have the best of both worlds. If there's sun out, you can get it late in the evening. You have the power to get through an extended cloudy situation or even maybe a power outage if you're using grid power as well as solar. So what do you guys think of these panels so far for, I think these are about $187. You know, before my discount, you know, Rodney Hunt 50 and get $50 off any order over $500. So, you know, if you're interested in these, of course, I'll leave them linked up below. I think they've been doing pretty good, you know, even with the vertical or the laying on the ground. They're just as efficient as any other panel that I've definitely tested. And in the right situation, you get this thing on a ground mount with the right thing under, you know, either white rock, concrete, whatever the case may be. Something that can reflect the sun back up. They'll definitely get a lot more power than most panels that I have for sure. And they're not the heaviest panels in the world, so I definitely like that. They're not the lightest ones I've ever had, but for the size, you know, for what they're rated for, they're definitely the lightest panels. Hey, think about hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss the upcoming videos. And thanks for watching.